Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Tiffany Benson, one part of Team Benson, and it is time to pick our groceries for the week in my garden. Okay guys, so if you guys haven't already guessed, this is my favorite time of year. The late winter, early spring, for us, <laughs> is my absolute favorite time of the year because things are starting to bloom again, they're starting to grow again, and we have a lot of things in our garden. So today I'm going to focus on a couple of things for dinners throughout the week. We still have a bunch of stuff in the refrigerator. And then also we're gonna get some herbs because we need to get the dehydrator going so that we can make sure we have our year supply of all of our seasonings and spices and herbs. So speaking of herbs, let's go up to the front and start with the herb bed and see what we have going because yeah, I can already tell we've got a lot guys. Okay guys, so the first thing that I am going to start with is going to be this sweet marjoram. It has gotten 100% out of control along with the lovage and it is blocking the sun from everything else. So we want to get a good crop of chives, we want to get a good crop of thyme and in order to do that we need to get some light to this bed for the other things. And just like that, we can now see our hedgehog again. <laughs> so guys, I really do come in and cut these back all the way, like all the way, all the way. You can see all the little new growth coming in on these plants and they are herbs. Herbs will grow like nobody's business. They will, if you cut them all the way back, they'll continue to grow and you'll be just fine. But now this is gonna allow this bed to get so much more light to some of the other things that we also want to grow. So guys, I've had a lot of people ask me if it's possible to make money in a small space garden. And I would say yes, and I would say with herbs. If you had some type of business where you dried your herbs, maybe sold like shakers of dried herbs or bundles of dried herbs, that is totally possible. One of the things that I did when I grew a whole bunch of dill, more dill than I ever knew what to do with, is that I sold dill balls, like dill butter balls, to uh, my neighbors, to our friends, and all I did was got some a lot of butter before butter was a million dollars, <laughs> and I just mixed in the dill and then wrapped them up in cute little wrappings and then sold those as just people wanting to use them for seasoning. And it's a really is a way that you can make it really sustainable because herbs grow so quickly and so aggressively. So you can get a lot of harvest with your herbs. So the next thing we are coming after guys is you probably guessed it, these celeries. Now I'm only going to pick the celery from this brassica bed, not the ones out in the pots because these ones are, are really big. As you can see, look at these stalks on here. So I'm going to go ahead and get this one this one and that one and i'm going to prune them way back just like i did these um, herbs all right guys look at some of these celery stalks this is huge oh my goodness and then some of them are like super super like thick look at that Guys, I am so excited about this. Now, as you guys know, if you guys are new to my channel, I treat my, my celery like a cut and come again crop. I don't blanch it, so I don't think that it should lose any of the flavor that the amazing sun has to give it. So I don't blanch my celery and I don't wait for it to grow into just one big giant stalk in, until, or to pull it. I pick my celery when it's a nice, young, tender, amazingness and it tastes so much better like so much better than any celery you would ever buy at the grocery store I use my celery leaves for making celery salt and then I chop up the stems and I put that in the freezer so that I always have it for stock for stocks and soups and stews and just cooking with celery and it is one of the most amazing things I could have put in my garden because it has so much flavor so much greatness and I just absolutely love it so I suggest you guys treat it like a cut and come again as well 
Now up next, I'm gonna go through these and see if I have any green beans on here. Now I'm not really committed to this green bean patch. I wasn't even expecting it to even still be here, but it's been producing a couple green beans that I've been adding to our veggie roast. So I'm gonna go ahead and go through here and see what I have. And just like I thought, I have four green beans. <laughs> I swear I have been getting four green beans at a time every like couple of weeks. So like every two weeks-ish, week and a half, I get four green beans <laughs> and it's, it's pretty funny. But the fact that I have green beans in January is surprising at all. So I'm just gonna go with thanks garden. <laughs> but yeah, four green beans at a time. Now the next thing we're gonna pull is going to be this broccoli head guys. We, that last broccoli head was amazing, like so good. So we're gonna pull this one and then we will have that one roasted too, probably with those four green beans. So guys, here's the thing about my garden with broccoli. I never get giant broccoli heads. I think one time I did and I only had two broccoli plants and I really did feed them a lot. But I never get giant broccoli heads, but I will get broccoli for months. Because your broccoli, if you don't pull the plant, it'll produce side shoots, which will give you just loads and loads of broccoli. So although I might not get an initial really big head, I mean, this is still enough that when I mix it with the leftover radishes that we have, a couple potatoes and those four green beans and roast them all, it's going to be a significant side dish, but we're gonna have broccoli for months now and it's all gonna taste delicious just like this first initial one. So sometimes, don't worry about the first size of it, just know that you're gonna have it for a longer period of time and you're gonna produce a lot of broccoli. Now guys, one of my potatoes died, so I'm gonna pull it and see if there's any baby potatoes attached to it. All right, so it's definitely not, this one's not ready yet, but this one over here died and I wanna go ahead and pull it because I do wanna add more soil to heal this one up to see if we can get more potatoes. So let's just pull this one. Uh, I'm hoping this is not a bad idea because I don't wanna ruin that potato. And I have I pulled both, so there's that. And I have one big giant potato that I feel like could have been the seed potato, but it's hard. It's very hard. And you have a little bitty potato right here. I did not mean to do this, guys, but you know what? It is what it is. It's what happened. One right there. Hmm. Yeah, so this must have been the seed potato because it has the, the stems attached to it. So what I'm going to do is, I guess I've just ruined that, but we got two potatoes. <laughs> and so I'm just going to bury this back, I guess. We'll just, yeah, we'll just start fresh. We'll bury it back and see what we can get if maybe it grows back. I don't know. I was gonna start more potatoes anyway, so I think that that'll be a good idea. But it has some, some sprouts on it, so we're just gonna go ahead, bury that back, and I'll probably grab another rusted potato and throw in here. Probably shouldn't have disturbed that. I did get two potatoes, so that's fine. <laughs> I will put that with the broccoli and the four green beans, and the side dish is getting bigger and bigger by the day. But <laughs> I should have left that. So that potato was still really, really hard. Um, that is the seed potato. Like that's where everything's coming out of. So I'm just gonna go ahead, I reburied it back in there. Um, and I have maybe like one or two rusted potatoes in the kitchen that I'm gonna add in there. And then that will just be the later crop of potatoes, hopefully, if everything goes well. Um, I needed to plant some potatoes, so there's that. But yeah, it's fine, it's fine, we're all fine. And the last thing we're gonna get, guys, are the flowers. We are getting so close to filling an entire jar. And yes, that's what you call a fun harvest. We have a ton of celery. We have some sweet marjoram in here somewhere, some lovage. We have our two potatoes, our flowers, our broccoli, and our green beans. 
So that is it guys, that is the harvest. If you guys are wondering what I'm doing with the flowers, I'm gonna be making some skincare once I get enough of them dried and in a jar. I'm gonna do an update on it because we have picked a lot of flowers, like a lot to where like the jar that I'm using, it's getting pretty full. So I will do an update video on that and the pine saw that I made too from our pine tree um, in the neighborhood and all that fun stuff. But thank you for joining me today on my garden harvest. I'm gonna go and get this dehydrator going it is time to fill up that jar with more celery salt and more herbs. If you guys are looking to be able to create revenue in your garden, I highly suggest plant herbs. Plant all the different types of unique herbs and things that you think that maybe people don't have in their gardens. And that could be one way that you can start your own store. So until next time, guys, grow yourselves a garden because even a small space can provide you with tons of food. Bye, guys.